would like to turn to uh, Matthew and chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2. So read a couple of very familiar passages. Will be read around the world at this time. Matthew chapter 2, I read from verse 1. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard it, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him, and gathered together all the chief priests and scribes of the people. He began to inquire of them whether Christ was to be born. And they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, You, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the leaders of Judah, for out of you shall come forth a ruler who shall shepherd my people Israel. And Herod secretly called the Magi and ascertained from them the time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, said, Go, make careful search for the child. And when you've found him, report to me, that I too may come and worship him. And having heard the king, they went their way, and lo, the star which they'd seen in the east went on before them, until it came and stood over where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. They came into the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. And opening their treasures, they presented to him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned by God in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their own country by another way. And Luke in chapter 2, reading from verse 8. In the same region there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy, which shall be for all the people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You shall find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. It came about when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds began saying to one another, let us go straight to Bethlehem then and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came in haste and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. When they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. And all who heard wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. I want to pick up one or two things and take up a theme which I know we've done I don't know how many times, but we certainly have done before. And that is just this matter of the people who were ready for the coming of the Messiah. People ready for the coming 
of the Messiah. Those that were ready for his first coming teach us something about those who will be ready for his second coming. The ones who are ready for his first coming teach us for these days something about those who will be ready for his second coming. And I want to pick up a number of things this morning. First of all we have the wise men. The wise men from the east. These were the magi. The magi from I think it's reasonable to say from Persia, Iran, current day Iran. They were probably in the line of the um, Magi, as with Daniel, in the book of Daniel, remember the wise men who um, surrounded um, the king at that time. There were wise men from the east. These Persians, Iranians, amazingly were seeking the Jewish Messiah. I don't know if you've considered the magnitude of that, but it, it is something quite amazing. That at the first coming of the Messiah, there were Persians, Iranians, who were seeking a Jewish Messiah. Do you know what's happening in the world today? We're hearing reports now from the nation of Iran. God is doing an amazing work in the underground church in Iran. And what is happening? Iranians, Persians are seeking the Jewish Messiah again. There's nothing new under the sun. What happened at the first coming of Jesus is happening at the second coming of Jesus. Iranians, Persians are seeking the Jewish Messiah. Hallelujah. Mm. What a savior. These were men who understood the book of Daniel. They understood the book of Daniel. In the last days, dear friends, there is a book which is important for us to understand. All 66 books are very important. Every word of God, dear friends, all scripture is inspired by God and profitable, but there is one book which is marked out specifically for us that we should understand, and it is the book of Daniel. It is the book of Daniel. In Matthew 24, Jesus speaking about the last days and the signs of his return. And what is one thing that he points to for people to understand? Matthew 24 verse 14 says, This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to the whole world for a witness to all the nations. Then the end shall come. Therefore... When you see the abomination of desolation which was spoken of through Daniel, the prophet, standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. What's the book that Jesus points us to? That we need to understand to appreciate the days before his return. The book of Daniel, dear friends. There's nothing new under the sun. These wise men from the east, I have no doubt, had studied the book of Daniel. They knew that the Messiah had to come at a certain time, and they came seeking him who was to be born king of the Jews. The weeks of Daniel, the sevens, were laid out by the prophet Daniel and these wise men came seeking the Jewish Messiah. We need to understand the book of Daniel. Wise men will seek to understand the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 10 
warns us of something which shocked Daniel, rocked him to his core. He fell almost like a dead man. He was greatly perturbed. What was it? The prince of Persia. He ran, dear friends. What is the thing that we need to watch out for? The principality, the dark spiritual force that will drive events in the Middle East in the last days. What is it? Persia, the prince of Persia. Iran, dear friends. Keep your eyes on Iran in the Middle East. It is the power, the principality of Persia which will drive the destructive forces of darkness that will seek to destroy Israel in the last days. Watch out for Iran. Understand the book of Daniel. What else do we know about these men? They were following, dear friends, a supernatural life. A supernatural life. They weren't acting by human wisdom. They weren't uh, following the daily newspapers or anything like that. They were following a supernatural light to lead them to the Savior. Dear friends, we need, we need that supernatural light. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. The Spirit of God who he has given, there is an anointing which will teach us and illuminate for us and give us understanding of the things of God. We need to look to God for that same light that will lead us and give us the understanding that we need for the last days. What else can we say about these people? They didn't know it all. Isn't that good? These wise men from the East, who appreciated the revelations given through the prophet Daniel, these Iranians who were seeking the Jewish Messiah, but they didn't know it all. They had supernatural light, but they didn't know it all. Dear friends, praise God for everything that God reveals to us, but none of us, dear friends, know it all. None of us know it all. And we need one another. We need to listen to the counsel of God. There is an ongoing revelation regarding the last days. In the last days, things will become evident. Beware of systems of theology which have everything planned out. This is going to happen, then that's going to happen, and this is going to happen. And Watch out, dear friends. We don't know it all. The wise men didn't know it all. They came, where is he who is to be born king of the Jews? What's the place? They needed someone else who had that revelation from the word of God. Bethlehem of Judah, by you shall come forth he who is to be king of the Jews. So don't think you know it all. And watch out for people who think that they do. Watch out. What else? These men, here's a controversial one. These men were told not to trust human government. Why? Herod was operating under an antichrist spirit. The authorities of the day were overtaken by the spirit of antichrist, dear friends. And in the last days, watch out. Don't trust human government. Because human government will be controlled by the spirit of Antichrist. Our leaders will be lying to us. Our leaders 
will not be to be trusted. God says, don't trust Herod. Don't go back to him. Don't believe what he's saying. Go by another way. Dear friends, we need to go by another way. We need to look to the word of God. We need to trust what God says. And we need to beware because in the last days, dear friends, human government is going to be overtaken and controlled by the spirit of Antichrist. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't submit to authority, to government. I'm not breeding a rebellion here. I'm not sparking an uprising. I'm not saying go get yourself a double barreled shotgun and take up arms against our government. I'm not saying assassinate Boris Johnson. Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But what I am saying is in the last days you cannot trust human government because it's overtaken and it's controlled by the spirit of Antichrist. The World Health Organization controlled by the spirit of Antichrist. Governments of the nations are devising a vain thing. The kings of the earth take their stand. The rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. There's nothing new under the sun, is there? Yeah. One more thing, and most important. These men were worshippers of Jesus. These men were worshippers of Jesus. Dear friends, we can praise God that Iranians have been saved. We can search the book of Daniel and seek to understand the days in which we live, and we should. We can keep our eyes on the principality of Persia and watch, watch, watch what's happening with Iran in the Middle East. We can seek that supernatural light and keep on searching the scriptures. We can accept that we don't know it all. We can watch out for a deceived human government. We can keep our eyes on the Antichrist spirit which is pervading throughout the earth. But the question is this, are we worshipping Jesus? Are we worshipping Jesus? At the centre of our lives as we wake up each morning. Are we getting down on our knees and bowing before him and lifting our voices and praising the Lord Jesus Christ? Because Jesus said, the Father desires those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Are you a worshipper of Jesus, dear friends? You might be getting it all right. You might have it all planned out what's happening in the last days. You might be watching the news and clicking on the internet. You might be keeping up with it all. But the question is, are you worshipping Jesus? Day by day by day, are you bowing before him and lifting up your voice and giving him glory and telling him how much you appreciate him? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, how I love Jesus. The sweetest. Name on earth. Name on earth. Be a worshipper, dear friends. Be a worshipper of Jesus. What about the shepherds then? The second group I want us to think a little bit about this morning. What do these men teach us about the last days? Well, the shepherds were in the fields when? At night. At night, dear friends. I don't want to fall out with anybody and argue with anybody about what pans out in the last days, whether the rapture's before the seven years, or in the middle of the seven years, or wherever it is. But I'm telling you this, the shepherds were in the fields at night. The people that walked in darkness saw a great light. Watchman, watchman, how far gone is the night? Is he coming at the second or the third watch of the night? Dear friends, Jesus is coming back for us when it's dark. And the shepherds will need to keep watch over their flocks by night. 
I don't want to fall out with anybody about the timing of the rapture. I don't want to argue about that. It's something I try and avoid. But one thing I am convinced of, anybody who is not preparing the people of God for night time is not a faithful shepherd. There's times of great darkness ahead. There's persecution. Difficult times, wild times, will come. A great apostasy, a falling away from the faith. Most people's love will go cold. It's going to be dark, dear friends, at the return of Jesus. The shepherds were watching over their flocks at night. Luke chapter 12. Let's just read one scripture. I've referred to one or two, but let's actually read Luke 12 and verse 35. Be dressed in readiness and keep your lamps alight. What do you need a lamp for? The wise and foolish virgins. Keep me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. What do you need a lamp for? It's night, dear friends, you don't need a lamp for the day. The shepherds were watching their flocks at night. Work while you have the light, Jesus says, for night is coming when no man can work. Dear friends, we're going into a time of darkness before the return of Jesus. And you need your lamps burning. Be dressed in ready and keep your lamps alight. Be like men who are waiting for their master when he returns from the wedding face, so that they might immediately open the door to him when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master find, shall find on the alert when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will gird himself to serve at them, recline at the table, will come up and wait on them, whether he comes in the second watch or even the third, finds them so blessed. Blessed are those slaves. Be sure of this, if the head of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have allowed his house to be broken into you too be ready. The Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. When's he coming? Second watch, third watch. He's coming like a thief in the, in the night. He's coming like a thief in the night. The shepherds were keeping watch over their flocks by night. By night. At a time of darkness. Will he come at full moon? Or will the moon be as blood? He's coming at night. A good shepherd, dear friends, is watching over his flock by night. There's encouragement for these shepherds. You know what the encouragement is? They received amazing revelation of heaven. The glory of God. You know what God's going to do for us? Here's a word of encouragement. He's going to lift our eyes, dear friends. When you see these things, look up. Your redemption draws near. God is going to begin to lay upon our hearts a little glimpse of the glory that is to come. Christ in us, the hope of glory. He gave the shepherds a little glimpse of the glory of God. The glory of God. And the angels, the heavenly host that were singing glory to God in the highest. Glory to God. Dear friends, glory is going to be a word that should be on our lips in these final days. A little touch of glory. A little glimpse of glory was given to the shepherds. And a word of encouragement. What's the word of encouragement? Do not be 
afraid, dear friends. Do not be afraid. Just been talking about that, haven't we? Do not be afraid. When men's hearts will faint from fear at the expectation of what is coming upon the earth. What should be our expectation? We were thinking about it last week. A glorious hope, dear friends. We're going to be changed at the twinkling of an eye, the last trumpet. The trumpet shall sound, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we who remain shall be gathered to them to meet them in the air. And thus we shall be with the Lord. What a day that will be when my Jesus I will see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand and snatches me out of Sodom, leads me to that promised land. What a day, a glorious day that will be. A word of encouragement, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me, in my Father's house of many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, what? I will come again to take you. Jesus is coming to take us, dear friends. Don't let your heart be troubled. Do not be afraid. Word of encouragement. Turn to Luke 12 and verse 42. The Lord said, Who then is the faithful and sensible steward whom his master will put in charge of his servants to give them their rations at the proper time? Blessed is that slave whom his master finds doing when he comes. Truly I say to you, he'll put him in charge of all his possessions. But if that slave says in his heart, my master's going to be a long time in coming, begins to beat the slaves, both men and women, eat and drink and get drunk, the master of that slave will come on a day when he does not expect, at an hour he does not know, will cut him in pieces, sign him a place with unbelievers. Who then is the good and faithful steward who gives God's people the proper food at the proper time. What's good food for these days, dear friends? What's a sign of good godly ministry in the days that we live? Number one, it urges you to get ready. It urges you to get ready. To be dressed in Readiness. If you're listening to ministry that is not urging you to get ready, to be dressed in readiness and to be ready for the return of Jesus, turn it off, dear friends. It's not the right food for this time. The proper food for the proper time is a ministry which says, come on, the clock's ticking, Jesus is coming back soon, Get ready. Make sure your lamp is right and make sure you're dressed in readiness. What else? The shepherds were preparing a flock that was spotless. Dear friends, they were there to prepare spotless lambs. If the ministry of the Word of God is not urging you to get your life right before God, there's something wrong with it. Watch out if you're listening to stuff that's never correcting you, never challenging you to be spotless and to be ready for the return of Jesus. For he who has this hope purifies him himself, as he is pure. The shepherds were preparing a flock of spotless sheep. 
for God. The bride makes itself ready. The bride makes itself ready. Are we waiting for the Lord or is the Lord waiting for us? The bride has made herself ready and the true ministry of the Word of God will challenge us to get our lives cleaned up and to be ready for Jesus' return. What else? The true ministry of God prepares a bunch of sheep ready for sacrifice. Ready for sacrifice. It'll stir us to look up. It'll stir us to clean up. And it'll stir us to give up. To lay down the things of this world. To sacrifice for the sake of Christ to do the will of God. Good ministry will stir us to look up. It's not often I do this, you should appreciate it. Three things. Look up, clean up, and give up. Okay? Good ministry will have us look up, clean up, give up. and give up. The shepherds, dear friends, were preparing the sheep ready for sacrifice. And one more thing. These shepherds, what did they do? The wise men were worshippers. These shepherds, they were those who went out at night. And what did they do? They made known everything about Jesus. Dear friends, we need to go out and we need to make known what has been revealed to us about this Messiah who's coming. Coming in judgment. One who came, offered himself on Calvary's cross. We need to go out and make him known, dear friends. The people who were ready the first time he came will be just the same kind of people who are ready at his second coming. May God bless his word to us. May we be worshippers. May we be those who make Jesus known. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the Word of God. We thank you for these stories that perhaps we, we kind of grown up with and Christmas by Christmas and even readings in schools and all this kind of thing. And we, they're on the Christmas cards, shepherds in the field abiding, and, uh, wise men, um, we three kings, all this kind of stuff. It's, it's, it's all a bit fairy tale, but Lord, we thank you that there's a, a reality, that, the, that there's instruction for us here, that there are principles for us to observe and understand, and Lord, take heed of. And so, Father, we pray that you'll help us to take heed in these days. Lord, that we, we will be looking up, and we will be cleaning up. And Lord, we will be giving up the things and laying down our lives before you. Lord, help us to be worshippers and help us to be those who make you known. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.